Hey friends, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda and today we're going to go through the pantry and we're going to do sort of like a spring pantry update. How did we fare through the winter and through the fall? What did we use? What do I need to change up for this year? It's all going to be a learning experience. I will link above the video I did going into last fall where I talked about, I stood right here in our pantry and talked about all of the amazing things that we preserved, whether it be through dehydration, canning, freezing, or even freeze drying. We've used a lot of our things, so let's see where we're at now. This is our little um, bin of where I kind of put our potatoes and our squash. I have one spaghetti squash left from last year's garden and one butternut. Now I did not grow these butternut. I actually purchased these from Azure Standard and one left of those. Come down to our sweet potatoes. I've got five sweet potatoes left, just five. And then this bottom bin is actually empty. And then when it comes to potatoes, this is all that is left. I went into the winter with a lot of potatoes and uh, just yesterday I kind of went through this bag and took any that were sprouting and I actually planted them in our garden at the homestead. So this is what is left now. We went through our potatoes fairly well. I'll also say though I canned up, I think I have four left, four quarts of potatoes just for easy cooking and for convenience, but also because they were starting to sprout a bit and I wanted to preserve them longer. I have not had much luck growing potatoes or even sweet potatoes in the past. I'm giving it a go one more time this year. I have all of our potatoes planted in pots and I plan on hilling them, just adding dirt as the plants and the greens grow. The reason I think I had problems in the past is because our dirt at our homestead property is um, pretty hard. It's clay-like, it's very compacted, and it's taking a couple of years for us to really work through that, loosen it up, amend it, and get it into some really good workable soil. But this year I'm planting in pots just to help give myself a break with all of that while I work through the rest of the garden. So we'll see how that works. And I do plan on growing sweet potatoes. I'm gonna give it another try. This is only my second try of doing it this year, but I will get my slips sometime in probably June-ish, July, and then I will plant those also in pots. I'm going with the pots for potatoes this year to see how that works out for me. And when I say pots, I'm doing like really big pots. I get these free from a local nursery. They're just trying to get rid of them, give them away. And I will fill them with really good dirt and plant my potatoes that way. This is all that is left of our onions. I purchased 40 pounds of organic onions from Azure Standard. Gosh, this was probably September or October. They have lasted so well. I do have one here that's, you know, try, <laughs> trying to grow. And I have a couple that are, you know, got a little bit of soft spots. But for the most part, the onions have lasted fantastic. Now we plan on getting a little bit of cold weather over these next few days. And so I'm actually gonna take these onions, especially the ones that are more soft and, uh, trying to grow, I'm gonna make a French onion soup. We're gonna use these and I will probably buy more onions from Azure in my next order, in my May order. But I will say the 40 pounds lasted very well right here in our front room of our house, which we call our pantry. Now it's very bright right now. I opened the blinds for filming, but the blinds are normally left closed so it stays darker in here, stays cooler. Uh, we don't have the heat on, right? So we try to keep this room much cooler than normal so that these items do last a little bit longer. So now we're here at the canning shelf. I've got two sets of shelves here. I'll show the other one in a minute. These two bins are our freeze dried items. I have not really gone through many of our freeze dried items. Um, the best part about that is, is that they have a really long shelf life as long as they're properly freeze dried and kept in the Mylar bags. Uh, but here's some apple slices from January of this year. 
Here's Chili from June of last year. So we have most of these items, this is elderberries from our garden. Most of these items are individual ingredients, onions, eggs, celery, squash. I have a lot of squash from last year's garden. So I actually want to kind of start working through some of these things. I don't have to work through all of them, but I really want to kind of work through some of these things, especially before this year's garden really takes off. And then I'm inundated with more produce. But the other thing I'm realizing with the freeze dryer that I want to get better about for 2024 is actually freeze drying meals. So I showed you that packet of chili. I've got three or four of those left. We went camping last week and I brought a packet of chili. My family, they actually had purchased freeze dried meals from um, Mountain Readiness might be the company. I'm looking at the bin over there because they wanted different things. They wanted spaghetti and meatballs and they wanted macaroni and cheese. And I think my husband had beef stew. And so while we're on our trip and as I'm eating my chili, I'm thinking, yeah, I need to freeze dry meals. Not so much of the individual ingredients, especially if I already have it, but more ready-made meals just to make life a little bit easier. Let's go actually over to this other shelf right here. So all up here is our vinegars and I've got a little bit of olive oil here, a little olive oil here, but these are all the vinegars that we use for cooking, the olive oil I use for cooking as well as for soap making. Um, but what's great about is that these don't go bad and I've had these vinegars now for probably close to a year, if not a little over a year. And we're working through them. Some of them are a little bit you know, more full than others, but it's really great to have these on hand. I've got the red wine, the white wine, um, apple cider vinegar. I've got the, the mirin, like the Japanese vinegar, and then olive oil, right? So having, oh, and balsamic vinegar. So having all of these things just makes cooking really easy too. When you have all these vinegars on hand, these are empty jars. I've got more olive oil there for soap making. And then I've got two and a half quarts of freeze dried celery. Um, my celery was starting to go bad. I don't know when I did this offhand, but sometime last year. So I decided to slice it and freeze dry it. And I just put it in these jars and vacuum sealed with the lid on. And I have been pulling from this, but again, I probably need to start using this more rather than pulling or buying fresh celery. This is freeze dried cilantro. I am so excited about this. I also have a Mylar bag of this in one of those bins too. This is cilantro that I grew in my garden. I have never successfully grown cilantro before. And I realize now it's because I was growing it at the wrong time of the year. I'm in zone 7B, 8A, and it grows really well throughout the winter, fall, winter, early spring. And so it's starting to bolt now, but I harvested, freeze dried my cilantro so I can save it and use it later on in meals this year. These are more freeze dried items down here. This is actually freeze dried chopped garlic and freeze dried sliced garlic. Now, either one of these I can use for cooking. And then I've got cucumbers. I've got diced cucumbers as well as sliced. And the whole thought process with these was that the diced, I would be able to make a quick tzatziki with a mixture of like yogurt, sour cream, lemon juice, garlic, and have a really yummy tzatziki sauce in the middle of winter. And I have done that probably twice, not as much <laughs> as I think I was going to do, but I have done it. Now I've got two and a half quarts of the diced cucumber and one quart of, excuse me, no, two and a half pints of the diced cucumbers and one quart of the slice. Now this, I was thinking I would make into a cucumber salad with like a red onion and a vinegar and a garlic um, and kind of rehydrate these that way. And I may try that in the next couple of weeks. Then we've got some juices down here that were purchased from Azure Standard. So I've got lime juice, lemon juice, and a couple of apple juices that I was hoping to actually make some mead from to enter into our state fair this year. So I need to actually start that soon. And then these bottom two shelves, these are all green beans. I have a handful of quarts of green beans 
from 2022, two years ago. And so the rest are from 2023. But I realize that we have a lot of green beans. And while I love growing green beans, I love canning green beans because they're so easy. And I love eating canned green beans. I don't know that I'll need to do as many this year. So I may scale that back a bit. So I'm just looking, I keep on the notes app of my phone. I keep kind of an inventory of everything I've, most of everything I've got. Um, for the green beans, we have 37 quarts. I think we started, we went into the winter with around 60-ish, low 60s. So we have eaten quite a bit, but to go into, gosh, we're in April now, 37 quarts, I probably could scale that back a bit. Okay, we're gonna start with this top row on this next rack. Now, where my hand is all the way forward is all stock. So I actually have duck stock, chicken stock, beef stock, turkey stock, and then I made a faux, or excuse me, fa base, um, which is a, is it Korean? I think it's a Korean soup. I would say pho, P-H-O, but it's pronounced pho. I actually made four quarts of that soup base so that we could make pho whenever we wanted to easily in the winter. But the whole point is this all the way over here, all bone broth stock, homemade. I rotate through this rather quickly. It doesn't necessarily may look that way because there's so much. Uh, but I really do. I mean, I've got seven quarts of chicken. I only got three pints of chicken left, but I've got five quarts of beef. And then I've got, I think, six pints of beef. And then there's four pints of duck. And there's four quarts of turkey. Like there's a lot of stock here. And the reason is because number one, I do use it quite a bit. I think just last week I used two and a half quarts of stock, whether it be to cook rice or if I'm making a soup or um, thickening something like, or even like arborio rice, like a risotto, I'll use stock instead of water. But we use, use it a lot. Now the duck, this was just canned in February. So just two months ago, a month and a half ago. This is from October of last year, November, October, December, October. So, I mean, it's not even that old. We really do cycle through it quite a bit. And so this part of the shelf, my point is that it is always fully stocked because as I'm using, I'm replenishing. Now the other side, right? This is an empty row. These are empty pint jars. So this side, We've got one quart of a chicken corn chowder base. I think I started with uh, at least four or five. We're down to one quart. This is actually not something I canned. This is Brunswick stew that my mother and father-in-law canned, and it's one of my husband's favorite things. And so we have one left of those from them. I have two quarts of this sausage bean soup. This is a recipe from um, a newer book that I got last year, and I think I canned four or five quarts. We've got two left. I don't even know that I've tried it. I think my husband has eaten most of those um, as a quick meal. And then like I'd mentioned, we've got four quarts of the potatoes. So that's kind of left for the ready-made meals. Again, I wanna maybe do more chilies this year. I think I'd like to can a chili base. Um, I wanna can more meat sauce, like a meat marinara sauce. Speaking of which, let's go to the marinara, marinara row. Okay, second row. This is like, this is all that's left of my home canned items, right? These are all products I've purchased from Azure. We've got crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato paste. We've got one pizza sauce left, diced, and then canned mushrooms. As far as what I have canned, I've got one steak Diane left. It's from the same book that I had done the sausage bean recipe from. And I think I had canned two quarts and a pint of this. And I'll just say it's okay. I don't know that I'll do that again. This is an unstuffed cabbage quart. Now I've got three of these left. I actually opened one of these yesterday with our last cabbage that we had in the fridge to make an unstuffed cabbage casserole. This is basically onions, garlic, tomato sauce, ground beef, 
and herbs and spices that might be it so it's very similar to like a meat marinara and what I do is I'll cook some rice I'll saute some roughly chopped cabbage throw it all together with one or two quarts of this depending if I'm making like an 8 by 8 or in a 9 by 11 pan and then I top it with melted cheese so good it's one of my favorite easy casseroles that we like to make I'm definitely going to do these again. Um, I've got three left. I think I started with six because I was imagining I would do two quarts per meal. Um, and two quarts per meal is what I would do if I was doing a nine by 11. But I think we can get away with an eight by eight, which means I don't need to can as many of these this year. I have one pint of tomato sauce left and I've got three quarts of tomato water. Now I'll use this for chili or maybe for cooking beans. It's just an easy way to get a little bit more um, nutrition in with a tomato flavored water. And then I have four quarts left of our <laughs> RGM. This is our roasted garlic marinara. This is my bread and butter when it comes to any kind of pasta dish. I only have four quarts of this left. And oftentimes when we are making pasta, I will cut this with maybe a crushed tomato or one of my pints of tomato sauce just to help it last a little bit longer. When I look at my tomato shelf, my goal for 2024 is to really eliminate a lot of this and more of this. And so I'm growing a decent amount of tomatoes this year. I'm praying I have a really good harvest and my goal is to can a lot more sauce. I wanna do like a meat marinara for an easy meal, but I also wanna do, and I'll probably will also do like the roasted garlic, but I also just want to do more jars of, I mean, this is crushed, but really kind of a beautiful thick sauce i say sauce but you know it's not flavored it's not salted because it's just so much versatile that way so now we're on the third row this the row and the fourth row the bottom row is a little bit um something that when i look at certainly there's pride and there's joy but if i'm gonna be honest there's also a little bit of eh, angst <laughs> because we're not going through the third and the fourth row as fast as I actually thought we would. So this right here, I'll go from over here to here is all kind of pickled items. So I've got dill spears, I've got dill slices, I've got pickled peppers, sweet heat pickles, regular dill pickles, like just a lot of pickles. And we have jars from 2022. And so I don't know that I actually need to can any pickles this year, which feels like blasphemy to even say, <laughs> because pickles is one of life's greatest joys, but we're not going through them like I actually thought we would. Um, there are times my, my family will grab a jar and they will just go through that jar within minutes but then, then they're just not into a pickle for maybe a month or two later. And so I really got quite the array and I have, what is it? A gallon and a half of fermented pickles in our overflow refrigerator. So in our overflow fridge, I have two quarts of fermented salsa, a gallon and a half of fermented pickles and a gallon and a half of sauerkraut, fermented sauerkraut. The sauerkraut I made a year and a half, if not two years ago. And so we're just, you know, we're working through things, but again, not as fast as I had expected. And so I'm probably gonna slow down the pickle operation this year. Uh, we do have six pints of canned beets. These are not pickled, but canned beets. I do love them on a salad and as a side, they're very good. And then we come to salsa. And I feel like salsa is one of those things that, you know, you just sometimes, if you love it, you love it. And if you love it, you can't get enough of it. But I have eight pints of peach salsa. And guys, this is from 2022. There's nothing wrong with this. It is so good. But I don't think I actually need to can any more of that this year. 
I still have, looks like, well, maybe one. I've got one pint of Tomatillo salsa from 2022. And then I have just regular, I've got spicy salsa, like a regular mild salsa. Um, these are from 2022 and 23. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight jars, eight pints of um, regular salsa, whether it be mild or medium. And so again, the tomatoes this year, I think I'll focus when I make salsa, maybe just on making a fresh pico de gallo for us to munch on, but I don't know that I'm gonna can too much salsa. Maybe, maybe one batch in the steam canner, but not too much because I'm realizing we're just not going through it as fast. And I thought about this, like, why aren't we going through it as fast? And I think the reason is because I don't buy tortilla chips. I know that there are brands out there that, you know, if you're on the scale, right, some of them are better than others and some of them are really much better than others. But all in all, guys, it's still a processed food and it still reacts at least for me, I think it reacts for my whole family. I think it probably reacts for you too in your body with inflammation, but not everyone's always aware of that or feels it. Sometimes people are just so far inflamed that anything more, eh, doesn't really, <laughs> really notice it. But when you start removing all of those processed foods and like eating healthier and whole foods, um, you start to feel the inflammation when it comes. I feel it almost immediately. And so we don't buy tortilla chips um, because I just don't want that in the house. It's too tempting to just keep eating, eating, and eating. So I have to find different ways to enjoy our salsa that is not tortilla chip related. Now we have um, pickled hot peppers. These are from 2022. We have relish from 2022. Guys, I'm gonna be giving the relish away because we apparently don't eat relish, <laughs> like ever. And then I've got a little bit of squash relish. This is from 2021. My mom and dad love this, so I may give this to them. Um, but the pickled hot peppers, I think we're good on, and the relish we are perfectly fine with. All right, bottom row, we've got apple pie filling. I've got one quart left of apple pie filling. This is from 2021. Again, we don't eat that many pies and I know there's different things you can do with it. I had two quarts. The other quart is actually open in the refrigerator because I've been trying to top pancakes with it. I've been trying to just use it as like a little snack sweet treat for the kids in their lunches and they're not really digging it. Um, so I probably won't do any kind of pie filling again. I also have three and a half quarts of spiced pears. These are delicious. I do love these. My family loves these. It's basically a pear that is cut open, the core is taken out, the skin is taken off very carefully with like a vegetable peeler, and it's in a very light syrup, in the ball canning books, within the fruit in syrups. There's different levels of syrup. There's like extra light, light, and I don't know what the other ones are called, but you know, it goes from lighter sugar to more sugar. And this is an extra light syrup, and I put a cinnamon stick in here, a star anise, and cloves, and it is so good so good so we really do love those and then I have strawberry lemonade I've got three pints of this I did this last May May of 23 um, I we haven't used it as much again we're just kind of drinking water mostly but I'm hoping to get this used up this spring and summer and enjoy that with the children applesauce I only have four pints of applesauce left I love canning, well making and canning applesauce because it is so easy and I think I have a video on it. I'll link it above. I do it in the crock pot overnight. You could do it in the instant pot. Easiest thing ever. And I like to use my applesauce for baking instead of oil. A lot of times when I'm making like sweet breads like a zucchini bread or a pumpkin bread, I will add my applesauce instead of any kind of oil. And I love to put it in my dehydrator on the Teflac sheets and make fruit roll-ups. Applesauce, because of the natural pectin in the apples, makes the best fruit roll-ups. I have some apple butter, apple pear butter, and then I've got some jams. I've got a bunch of jams from 2021. This is a fig red wine, and then I've got a fig shallot. 
And while these are probably good on toast with cream cheese, what we really use these for is pizza, like a different type of pizza base with maybe some arugula and some red onion and prosciutto and having um, the fig red wine or the fig shallot as the base on the pizza. That is really good. But since these are almost two and a half years old now, <laughs> We probably need to amp that up a little bit and eat more of those pizzas. Uh, last December, I did cranberry juice. I've got four quarts of these. So these are only three months old here. Um, I'm excited to actually try these and use these, whether it be for the children to mix with some lemonade and have a, you know, a fun summer drink, or even medicinally, if anyone's having some urinary issues, um, I'm glad to have that on hand. I actually hope to do more of that this year. We have raspberry jam, quite a bit of raspberry jam from last August. This is delicious so good. I actually buy the organic raspberries from Azure Standard. They come frozen. I buy them in the five pound box and that's what I can up to make our raspberry jam since we don't have raspberry plants yet. And it is my favorite jam. We also have peach, a spicy peach jam. We've got one strawberry left. We've got hop up bird jelly, we've got cranberry mustard, and we've got like a pear garlic preserve that I thought would be good like on a cheese board or charcuterie board. And then the cranberry mustard, we use that at Thanksgiving time. So delicious, this is a ball recipe too. There's a couple more things I wanna share. So this is our um, chest freezer that we're here in our pantry. I'm gonna open that and kind of share with you. Now I don't know, I think I opened this in that previous video last fall. It was so full, so full. And while it's still full now, we have eaten a lot. I can actually kind of see to the bottom. I can reach down in. We do have squash left. Now this is squash from our garden. This is from August. So I actually need to cook this one night in the next couple of weeks with a dinner, side dish dinner, or maybe make some sort of squash casserole. I've got leeks. These are leeks that I had purchased from Azure uh, back in October and I froze them. We do have quite a bit left of our chopped homegrown bell peppers. Um, I kind of try to mix them up with the red and the green, but I love having these in the freezer. Got our really measly kind of snow pea harvest from last year. And I have one bag of eggplant left from our garden. The rest down there is chicken, salmon, beef. We do have some corn left that we've been enjoying. And underneath this other side here is mostly fruit. I think I've got some um, sliced frozen peaches. I think there's one bag of blueberries left. We are out of strawberries. And then I think there's a bag of pears in there. And then otherwise we have, you know, some sausages that we buy from Azure. We'll have chicken breasts, chicken thighs. I've got two quarts of cream that I'll probably turn into ice cream at some point. But that's a majority of everything in here. And so I do plan on growing, slicing, and freezing a lot more of the bell peppers. I can't tell you how many times they come in handy. I love being able to just reach for one of those vacuum sealed bags and throw it in soups or casseroles or a stir fry or even um, fajitas with some onions and have some fajitas that way. They are so versatile, they are so good compared to having to go buy fresh bell peppers in the store, which were grown in a different part of the world most likely. It is, um, it's uncomparable, I think, in regards to quality as well as price. Having them homegrown, having them right here, so easy. So I love that. I also do love having the frozen squash. And like I said, I have some freeze dried too. Um, 
I need to figure out different ways to do that and use that up rather than just sauteing it. So that's why I said, maybe I'll try a squash casserole at some point. I also have freeze dried tomato slices. I just remembered this because I wanted to try to make a tomato pie in the dead of winter. <laughs> so I may try that in the next few weeks also, just to kind of use these things up and know what we like and what works and what doesn't. So that covers the pantry here. Um, like I said, a handful of veggies, but mostly meat. Our freezer in the garage is all of our beef and pork. It's just beef and pork. And we're working through that. We only just got our whole hog um, three months ago, three or four months ago. So we're still working through that. Same with that, we got a half of a beef, half of a cow. Um, and so that's gonna last us well into 2025. Last but not least, cheese. Our refrigerator even feels empty right now. It may not feel that way to you, but it feels that way to me. So as far as cheese, we went into the fall with a lot of cheese. I went on a pretty big cheese making binge last summer and fall, um, but we are down to four and a half wheels of cheese. Now, I say that, but this is not a dramatic dramatic pause or dramatic statement here. This cheese will last us a very long time, but I do have some goals on what I want to do this year in regards to our cheese. Um, and I still have some cheese kind of down here. This is our Parmesan, but we're down to about, well, each of those wheels is four pounds. So 16, 18, we're probably down to about 19 pounds of cheese, which will last us, like I said, quite a while. But I think this year I wanna focus less on those fancy cheeses and more on mozzarella and like have that frozen uh, cheddars. And we do like Swiss. So I kinda of wanna have a Swiss, a cheddar, a mozzarella, I want Parmesan. I try to make one Parmesan cheese every year because it takes a minimum of 12 months to age. And so we always have one to work through. And um, what was the last one? Oh, Romano. I love Romano. I may love Romano better than Parm. And so those are the basic cheeses I think we'll try to stick to and um, forego some of those fancy cheeses until the other ones are more stocked. This is our fruit basket. It is empty. It has been empty for quite a while. Uh, even my daughter this morning was like, do we have any fruit? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. We have frozen fruit, but no. And so I really want to kind of come up with some ways to enjoy fruit throughout the winter months without having to keep buying it. Guys, I know we live in, I live in the United States of America. I live in a fantastic, uh, part of the country where you know food is readily available i'm aware of that and i i realize that not everyone has that luxury and so i don't take that for granted but i don't want to have to run to the store every three days for whatever the reason i really i'm really trying not to do that i think it's uh something that everyone can glean something from um maybe it's a different different lesson for everybody. But for myself, I'm, I'm trying to not have this life of convenience. I'm trying to have a life of abundance, but um, very intentional and um, aware of how food's grown, where it's coming from, how much is it costing? I think, and, and having that for my children too. I mean, having those types of awareness with everything you purchase and everything you grow and everything you do, I think just makes us more appreciative of everything we have. So that's basically where we are with our pantry and our food supply, still doing great. Lots of things to work through, but definitely things I wanna change up. Um, I do have an Azure pickup today in a few hours. And so I'm excited, I'm getting some apples. So we'll have some more apples. I think I'm getting a couple, I think I'm getting uh, 10 pounds of onions, not 40 pounds, but 10 pounds of onions, some more potatoes. I do have carrots in our overflow refrigerator, um, but all in all, we are doing well. Let me show you what's going on with our garden plants outside because I'm gonna to get to start to plant those really soon. And I am just amazed and floored at how they look right now. Have you seen tomato plants to go into the garden that look this healthy and big? I am totally 
just in awe of the size of these things and how fantastic and healthy they look. I have never, never grown tomato plants this healthy from seed before. I mean, I have to show you this. This is a tomatillo. I'll see if you can see that. There it is. You see that? That is a tomatillo flower. It's not open yet, but I've got flowers. Check that out. I have tomato flowers. There's one, two, three, four, like six of them, six or seven of them. I've got tomato blooms on my starts and they're not even in the garden yet. And these are my peppers. They look great. They don't look as big as the tomatoes, but they look great. But even down in the pepper plant, there are little blooms starting to form. So excited. So I've got my work cut out for me. These are gonna go in the garden today. There are a lot of the perennials, medicinal and culinary perennials, and then everything else is gonna go in within the next week. Thanks for joining me today on our update of the winter and fall pantry, how we worked through things and how I plan on changing things up with this year's garden. I will see you soon. Stay healthy and stay well. Bye-bye.